Welcome back to Pro Shop. It's Pete here. And Anika and Barney. And in this video, we are updating you on the ice bath and answering all the questions that you guys have been commenting. Comfy. Mm. So, do you want to just jump straight into it or? Yeah, so Pete, where is this update video? Why is it taking so long? <laughs> yes, okay. We did say that this was only going to take, uh, we we're going to do a month long challenge and then we we're going to do an update video and see how the ice bath was going. Um, as it went, we went 10 days and we were testing the ice bath here in the workshop before we took it home. The entire time that I wanted to do an ice bath, I wanted to get it done in the morning or we were trying to do morning ice baths. Start your day with something hard and tick it off and then kind of everything else in the rest of the day is sort of easy. I tried to get up early but I kept on procrastinating and I was doing them in the afternoon more than the morning. I think it was about 25 days of doing afternoon baths and it was summertime. It was easy to do them in the afternoon. It was 40 degrees some days so you come home after work and just jump in. It was good. And then by about the 25th day I woke up and did one in the morning. I loved it so I continued on. Got the 40 days. I thought I was going to do the video then, pushed to two months, and now we're here at three months. I've been doing it every single day and loving it. All right, it's getting colder, heading towards winter, and um, makes it more challenging to get up in the morning and do the ice bath. But we're still doing it. Let's get a proper look. There is definitely ice in here. Pumps going. Yeah, 4.4 degrees. Anika, on the other hand, mm. um, when it was still here, so the first 10 days, my fault, sort of, because I, I dropped the temperature a lot because I wanted to get ice forming on the top. But this is great. It look, be a great thumbnail. Anika has to jump in there and I'll take a photo. Four degrees is really cold especially for someone that hasn't been doing a lot of them. And when you do those inflatable pools with ice sort of um, at retreats and workshops, by the time everyone's jumping in and out, that water temperature is roughly around, around about 10 or 12 degrees. It doesn't get that cold. So Anika went from doing, we both went from doing 10 or 12 degrees straight down to four. And the first 10 days were pretty rough on Anika. Mm -hmm. She managed to do them, got up to two minutes. But do you want to tell yeah, the story? well then just on, on day nine and day ten something weird started happening. Day nine I started to get this quite strange headache like up the back of my neck, um, like a lot of tension. And then on day ten it got very, very bad to the point that I was in so much pain that I literally thought that I might need to call the ambulance. Like Pete did a little bit of research and it turns out it was probably um, hypertension. Yeah, all the blood rushing from your body <clears throat> to whatever's, I suppose, sticking out of the water. Yeah. Which is your head. Which is my head. Um, I thought my head was going to explode. Mm. Um, and it's, so I, after that day, I decided to stop. But Pete's kept going um, yeah. for the full three months. There's not much talk around that type of stuff um, in regards to ice bars. There's heaps of positive stuff. It's just stuff that's super mainstream right now. Everyone's doing it. It's really, really trendy. But I don't think a lot of people are talking about when they have bad experiences. So that's kind of my bad experience there. And the more that I've shared that with people um, kind of in my life, in my circle, the more people have come out and said, oh, yeah, like I had a really similar, similar experience. Some people have even... Um, Bunny. Some people even said um, I've had an even worse experience and I've been um, uh, now um, having to have like medical tests treatments, and treatments yeah, yeah. and things because of how badly they reacted to such extreme cold. So Yeah, so I really recommend everyone should do it. And give it a go. I think still think you should get back in, but we'll slowly do it again. Yeah. All right, next question. What are those black bulkhead things and where can I get them? Okay, that was a big question. The tank... Uh, bulkhead fittings that we use to get the water in and out of the of the ice bath. 
they we got them from a local irrigation store. We're rural here, so we have an irrigation store. You can't get them from a hardware or anything like that. Half inch plastic PVC uh, tank bulkheads. Yeah, we'll get some information to yeah. you guys about that. That was probably the hardest thing. I went to spa shops. We went to hardwares. We went everywhere looking for something that would be that plumbing size. stores and uh, plumbing yeah. stores. Yeah. So, honey, that's my. Bunny loves chewing on wood. He's a very natural boy. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, yeah. So then the next question, people were a little concerned about uh, if, if the Raptor line is okay in, in terms of like its safety for us to be for submerging our bodies in water that's been soaking in Raptor liner. Yes, that's a good question. Um, I'm not too sure. I'd have to get a chemical analysis done of the water. Um, three months, I feel fine. There's no rashes or growths. I'm aware of. You don't feel bad. I don't feel bad. Uh, it's hard to say there's so much positive benefits of the ice bath, so I don't know. Maybe it's a long-term effect. Um, then there's the difference. Some people are saying Raptor liner or Linex liner. What's the difference? I just know there's a big price difference. Um, Do we have any problems around the silicon, around the bottom? It did start to crack. So I think the silicon shrunk back. We did let it dry for probably a month before mm. we painted, mm. but it still shrunk back. There is a primer you can put on the silicon before you paint the liner. Um, one or two other people commenting say, what about using a aquarium fish pond liner? There's a paint that you can mm. do, which is non-toxic. Maybe the, for the future, that would be great to use. Mm. Um, try that one in the next one. Yeah, d definitely the outside is great with the Raptor liner. Yeah. It's durable, not that you move the thing around but you do bump and scuff it and it still looks brand new. Yeah. Um, next question was what filter do you use? Yeah so when we first set it up I had a little inline um, irrigation filter. It just seemed to slow the pump down I think because I was pumping up and then pumping back down. It seemed to slow it down so I took it out. So when we first were using it here there was no filter on it. When we first put out the video there was no filter on it and it lasted on the 10th day of testing filter jammed up with like some hair. <laughs> Sucked up some hair. It's a very long dark brown with a tint of red through it. Don't know who that could be. And don't know where that came from. And the pump stopped. So it didn't blow the pump up, it just undid the top, pulled the hair out, cleaned it up, put it back in. And since then I've put a, an irrigation filter on it. What we did change was the pickup point before we just had it coming in one side and back out the other. I've now used the drain and we screwed the, uh, the tap on there. On that tap, I put the fitting so the filter goes on the side of the, the tap and then back up and then out both jets, about to both bulkheads. This way it's actually drawing the water from the cold down the bottom and spitting up at the top. It seems to circulate a lot better. The filter, probably every two weeks I have to clean it with just, it's just mainly fluff. Okay, hang on. All Let's right. not chew that anymore. We'll yeah. chew this one, but not that, not that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Should I get him a drink? All right. He's all right. It's a tough dog. What is he at? Nine and a half months old now? Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so yeah, the filter, um, change it every two weeks. I do ice bath every day with no clothes on. It's, I just, there's no one else around, so it's easier. So I think there would be no fluff on me, but there's plenty of fluff that just seems to come off and gets jammed. Uh, I notice it because the filter, the pump starts slowing down. You can hear it. And I know that the filter's a bit clogged, so I undo it every two weeks. It's nice. The ozone generator seems to be doing this job. Um, haven't sent the water out to get tested. I've just done a normal pH test and it seems to be neutral. That's a good thing. Good. Okay, next question. How did you screw the board to the outside with here yeah. without hitting any of the coolant lines? Yes. So after we dug in and exposed the coolant lines, put the bulkheads through, I noticed that the coolant lines were pretty much against the inside of the tank. So the outside is where I just put two little or four little screws and just screwed them in probably about five mil or into the top corners. And that was just to hold the board on there while we did it some work and got it painted and everything. And then once we fitted it back on, just glued it and just screwed it in. The glue really holds it and the screws just located. How did you install the tap onto the drain? I found that the drain was 
about, I think it was about a 16 mil outlet. But the tap I had was a 20 mil, and I saw that it was actually quite thick plastic. So I used a 19 mil drill bit and drilled out the plastic, and then used the tap itself to tap the thread into the plastic, pulled it back out, put some thread tape on it, screwed it in, and it's sealed. Amazing. Yeah. Magic. <laughs> Can I get a list of all the parts? Yes, we should have done that on the first video. We tried to do it by just showing you screenshots of what we searched. We'll put um, some links up. But we'll put some links up in the description uh, of this video. Seems to be everyone asking the same similar questions. What, where did you get the pump from? Where are the bulkheads? Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I'll put some links up. Perfect. And then um, how do you feel after three months of doing a bath every single day? Great. Simple answer is great. When we first started doing them of an afternoon, it was great, especially because I said it was summertime and come home, jump in the ice bath, cool down a bit. Uh, that was good. But then once I started doing it in the morning, uh, if people have followed people like Joe Rogan or Andrew Hoopman, people that do ice bath and they're pretty advocate for it, they notice, uh, they say that all the time, you do something hard in the morning, kick it off, then everything else seems to be easy. Cuts out stress. It's high dopamine levels, all that kind of thing. I really don't stress that much. I sort of love my job here. Problem solving more than stressful because there's so much going on. I can get a bit overwhelmed sometimes. And I noticed the very first day of doing it in the morning, that overwhelmness, is that a word? That Just feeling the of feeling overwhelm? Of being, the feeling <laughs> of overwhelm uh, disappeared. We're big advocates for a really great morning routine. You know, really find that it sets you up for your day. Yeah, I have noticed it's also because adding the ice bath to the morning routine, I've added a lot of other things because of the ice bath. So mm. um, some mornings we'd get up, we'd go do yoga, and then we'd come home, have a cup of coffee, go to work. Other mornings, if we're not getting up at five for yoga, we might just get up and have a cup of coffee and go to work. And now I've noticed doing the ice bath every single day get up at uh, quarter to five now, do the breathing exercise, do the ice bath, three minutes, and then um, I'll do 50 squats, do some chin-ups, do some pull-ups, bit of rows on the cable machine, and then walk backwards on the treadmill for 10 minutes. So I've added all that extra to me before I start the day. So that's feeling good. If you don't know about walking backwards or any uh just look up the knees over toes guy he'll yeah. explain everything ben patrick knees over toes yep. guy on instagram and youtube if anyone uh, has any kind of issues with their knees sore knees can't walk upstairs can't do squats can't do lunges knee pain someone says you're gonna have to have a knee replacement blah 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 <laughs> well just walk, just look up um knees over toes knees guy over toes he'll guy. Um, fix you right up yeah so that's why i walk backwards for 10 minutes on the treadmill, you turn the treadmill off and you actually power through. It's like pulling a sled. Your bum is to the plug. camera. Your bum is to the camera. Everybody's looking at your bum. Everybody's looking on. at your bum. So the other question was, how much power does it use? We always wanted to know how economical this ice bath was going to be. So when we brought it home, we added an inline power consumption meter to it. March was the first full month of running the bath. It was still hot with a few 40 plus degree days. Plus, we emptied and cleaned the bath, which adds to the cost as it takes a day and a half of running the freezer non-stop to bring the water temperature back down to cold. The entire month of March, the ice bath used 74.56 kilowatt hours, which here in Australia, we on average pay around 30 cents per kilowatt hour. So that equates to just over $22. April, it was starting to cool and it dropped down to 54.14 kilowatt hours, which is around $16. Now compare that to buying bags of ice every day. That's a huge saving. Something else we did which was totally unnecessary because I never use it was the light. These freezers have a light that uses a tilt switch which activates every time you open one of the lids. I wanted it to be on while the lid was closed so I took the switch apart and soldered the switch closed then I put my own switch on the outside of the bath. As I said totally unnecessary but it does look cool at night. What else was there? That's about all. That's about all. So first, I just want to say thanks for all the feedback, all the, the likes, the subscribes and everything. The this, questions. The questions. This is something that we usually don't do, this ice bath. 
I know it's a bit of a trend right now. Uh, we just wanted to try and build one and we just made a video of it. After this video, we're back to doing all the car videos. We'll be getting them out there. My mate's Chevy C1500 is up next and the Camaro back from paint, that's getting fitted up. So that'll be the one after that. And back also onto the RB EH. That's really doing well, people are loving that. So keep an eye out for all those videos, like, comment, share, do all that stuff. And as always, <laughs> thanks for watching. Thank you. Thanks, Barney. Thanks, Barney. <gasps> Shake. Shake. Yeah. Oh. Good boy. <laughs>